Outstanding artifact here. Nice piece of uh, North American folk art for you. This old banjo here is, I'm pretty sure it's completely made of pine. The neck is uh, not this fingerboard, ignore the, the fingerboard, modern fingerboard, but the neck is basically a big old thick piece of pine. And believe it or not, Pretty sure the rim is also, I think it's the same material. I think it's pine, pine rim as well. Pine, a bent pine rim. You do not see that often on a banjo, uh, basically mostly because it's not a, a great idea. Because it's awfully, uh, <clears throat> you can see there's been all sorts of uh, damage to the rim, it's been cracked and stuff. So when the collector handed this off to me to fix it up. I think I, I showed it in a live stream recently and it still had the original hide on it. So this is the new hide I put on it. It's one of those nifty transparent hides which uh, I, I sort of shied away from over the years but I like it. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's a really a really interesting piece of folk art. So well, unfortunately, somebody repaired uh, the fingerboard, I guess. So this is a, a modern repair on the fingerboard. That is modern rosewood that somebody's done a, a tolerable job of laying it on there. It looks like they've put, unfortunately, some white plastic position markers all over it, which those I don't like. But it'd be easy at least to pop out the, the, uh, the dot markers, those white dots. You could pop those right out. Uh, we had one, uh, one of our loyal viewers down here who goes by the name of Nims commented on an earlier video about, I guess in the live stream, that you could actually, you could drill a, put a, a little skinny wood screw in each one of these holes and you could heat it up and pop it out and replace it with some nice wood. That I think would make this instrument look a lot better. But I still think it's a really neat instrument. I mean, really what's, I mean, the neck is, is not bad. The peg head resembles a, jo uh, a Jacob's peg head out of New York. Uh, I've played one of those before. Um, it's in a private collection and it was, I think it's 1860s long neck banjo, but it had a peg head very, very similar to this shape on a long neck banjo. Anyhow, uh, what's really needs to be pointed out on this banjo is the hardware. It's bottom bottom mount brackets, and it's it's all br uh, brass construction, brass wire, that, and then brass nuts and sheet brass shoes that hook into the uh, into the bottom of the instrument. And you can see when the maker put this together, they took that a bent the bent pine rim, and they glued in some strips. I think the, the binding strips, I think, are also made of pine. So whoever did this had a bunch of pine. These, these big end blocks, this is, this is typical of older banjos. And this is the original screw that was in here. Whenever the person restored it, they, they sunk these two other brass screws in there to make the neck more secure. So I left, the, I left everything alone in there. I don't much like that. When they did that, they busted out the heels. The side of the heel there is busted. 
and the side of the heel there is busted too. So I'm not happy with that. But they did some nice repairs. This is a nice repair. Somebody sunk a, looks like a, an ebony wedge or some kind of hardwood wedge in there because this whole block, this whole pine end block is split down the middle. So it's been glued together. Another thing I did was I took this whole instrument apart, took the neck out and took all these hooks off and everything apart because I reheaded this. This is not the original head. That's the head I put on. I did a pretty nice job. Um, anyhow, when I did that, I, uh, I gave it a, a good cleaning and wiped it off. And then I took some, some wood glue and I filled in every crack in here. This thing was loaded with cracks. It basically was coming apart. You could take it, you could have destroyed it with your hands. And so I glued everything back together and clamped it all back up with rubber band, left it overnight, you know, clean it all off and stuff. And, and this is the end result. So it's, it's a really nice instrument. It, like I said, it's entirely pine. I believe it came out of Connecticut. So I'll show you the, the tailpiece. This is some kind of, I think it's a, a rosewood tailpiece. And I did, um, this is not an old tailpiece. It's some new minstrel repop that somebody bought or looks like. And I just, I, I carved it down a little bit so that the strings would at least go straight onto one of these uh, Morris bridges. And that's a copy of a coal bridge, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, from the 1880s, I think. And a guy named Morris makes those now. You can get these, these really nice bridges for classic banjo nylon strings. You can get those on elderly.com pretty easily for about 13, 14 bucks plus shipping. Um, oh, and also I replaced it. had a nasty piece of wire here on the end pin there. I replaced that with some heavy gut cordage that I have. You know, if I, if I have a piece long enough to tie a tailpiece on, I always save that because I know I'm going to need it on a project to tie it on like that. Uh, the pegs are just some old, you know, some old antique ebony pegs that are really sunk in there. But, yeah. I don't know. That, that's, I guess that's all I had to show on this banjo. It's, this is a nice... I've been going on for eight minutes now. But if you can't tell, I really like this instrument. It really... Uh, kind of suits me.